Welcome back to another video with the Movement Athlete. We've got a press to handstand mobility and range of motion based video for you today. I'm Jesse and this is Jared. So he'll be showing us some of these exercises today. The press to handstand requires a good bit of hip and shoulder mobility. So we'll show you a couple of exercises and positions that are good prerequisites before we get into the press to handstand. So the first two are two passive stretches, which are a pancake and a pike stretch. So Jared will show us what these look like. So the first is the pancake where you're straddling the legs and you want to be able to get the chest to the floor. And really this can be varying widths with the legs. So this is a wider straddle. We can do one that's about 90 degrees. And really the, the closer you can get to the floor, the more ideal. So this is called the pancake. The other stretch is the pike stretch. So straight legs, shooting for a straight back, reaching the hands as far forward as possible. So. These are two really important positions you wanna be able to do in the passive and eventually the active positions for a good press to handstand. And then uh, outside of this, having a good open shoulder angle in a handstand is going to be important as well. An open shoulder angle means having this be as close to 180 degrees as possible. If there are tight shoulders, then we're stuck in this angled position and it's immediately more difficult to do a good press to the handstand. So with that, we can start to get into the mobility, flexibility exercises. First set of exercises will be hip openers where Jared's lifting his knee up with a bent leg, moving up as high as he can and then moving out, out to the side and to the back. So when he does this, he's engaging the core and he's trying to not move his torso and lean into this. So that's the first one. You can also provide more resistance by him lifting the knee up and pressing down, providing pressure against his knee and pushing in the downward direction and he's got to resist it by lifting the knee higher. So that's a great one to hold for maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds. After this, we can go into a more of a straight leg motion. So lifting leg up straight and then eventually moving out to the side and repeating that. So up as high as you can, slowly out to the side and then down. Okay. Lastly, we can hold these positions. So if Jared is lifting his leg as high as he can, closing this angle up, trying to get Again, this leg as high as you can. This will get pretty strenuous in the quads, the, the psoas, the core, maybe the hamstrings is going to feel a stretch, but that'll get pretty intense if you're holding that for 30 seconds or so. Good hip opener work for uh, prerequisites and mobility that supplements the press to handstand. Next, we'll look at two different stretching base exercises. So we'll do the standing straddle flat backs as well as pancake good mornings. So for the first one, Jared will stand in a straddle position, holding a stick, and we'll start with the overhead position mimicking a handstand. He's trying to keep his arms in line. So just a straight line. And then he's gonna be hinging forwards at the hips, keeping the flat back all the way through. So he's far forward as he can, shooting for horizontal. Parallel with the ground, hips will move back slightly. This is a really good hamstring stretch and he's trying to focus on these positions and angles. Flat back, this will work the shoulders pretty well too. He's got to work to keep the stick in the position that it's in without dropping. So this is the straddle flat back exercise. And similarly, we'll sit down in the straddle position and do something that mimics the same position. It's just a, he'll be able to fold forward and, and uh, it stresses the body a little bit differently. Definitely works the hamstrings a little bit more actively on the way back up. So you can see it's the same motion, just down a sitting position. Forward fold the pancake and sitting back up again. And again, this, this is really working the shoulders. It's easy for the arms or the stick to drop as you come back up. Uh, if you go too wide in the straddle, it's really hard to come back up. So make sure you pay attention to the width of your legs in this. But this is ideal. This is what you're shooting for. You can see Jared is going all the way down. His chest is touching and he's coming back up again. This is what you're shooting for. And it's fine. It's probably not going to start off this way. It might start off half the distance. It might start off with a curved back. 
So we can show what these might look like. So the unideal and what to watch out for is to not curve the back. You don't want to be curving as you forward fold into this. It's going to put more stress on the lower back and it is not following the pathway and the positions of a proper press to handstand. You can also see there's a lowering of the stick and a little bit of a shoulder angle. So watch out for this. In addition to the width of your legs, if they're too wide, it's difficult to come back up again. The next mobility exercise is going to be the straddle and the pike lifts. So starting off in the sitting straddle, what we want to do is have the legs straight and we're going to engage the core as if the leg really starts at the stomach. And what we'll simply do is lift the legs up and down repeatedly. So the further the hands are away from the, the hips, the harder this is going to be. And the closer they are, the easier this will be. So you can see Jared is leaning more forwards and closing up this angle and it's getting near maximum effort. So this intensity is built right in there and, and you have to find where your level is where you can lift eventually to 20 reps in a row and you're trying to not move the upper body. This should stay completely still, the head should be still, chest not moving so much, the legs are lifting off the floor. Okay, so shooting for 20 in a row would be huge. That would be a, a good place to be. And then we can also move the hands way further back and um, we can really just try to lift the legs up close to the shoulders and the ears. We can lift them up repeatedly. We can also hold, okay? So trying to hold this up and lift the legs as close to the shoulders and ears as possible to get that compression. So any way you do this, this is going to have a lot of built-in intensity to it, okay? So similar to that, we can also focus on left and right only. So he's got one hand on either side of the leg and he can focus on the leg lift. So we'll do a few on that side and we'll do a few on the right leg as well. So same exact concept. If the hands are closer to the ankle, this gets pretty intense. And if it's closer to the hip, less intense. And again, play around with this. This could be a straight lift. This can be a hold. You could do circle, circular motions, different ways. Believe me, you're gonna feel this instantly if you have not embedded this into your press to handstand training. So we highly rate this as an important exercise for your press to handstands. So after performing these straddle leg lifts, it's likely that you'll feel some cramping and you need to stretch out the, the quads and so as. So Jared, I think we should throw that in real quick of just getting into this half kneel position, pushing down on the knee, engaging the core with a pelvic tilt and leaning forwards. And he should feel a stretch right down the side of his leg and the quad and so as hip area. So definitely feel free to throw this in between sets because uh, this will cramp up pretty fast if you haven't done this kind of movement before. Now sitting in the pike position, hands as far out as possible, lifting the legs, compressing. So this is active flexibility work. Jared is flexible enough to do a pike stretch where his chest and his legs are touching each other, but can you also lift your legs actively using the internal muscles rather than gravity to make this position? So again, hands closer to the hips, easier. Hands closer to the ankles, more difficult. So you can be lifting, you can be pausing, but another excellent variation of the leg lifts for the press to handstand. Another set of exercises ideal for press to handstands is working on the glute med. So we'll be doing some work in the quadruped position. We'll do some fire hydrants. So first we'll get down onto all fours and then Jared's going to be lifting to the side with a bent leg and just trying to keep everything parallel to the floor. His chest is right above the floor. He's not trying to tilt or twist his body, but rather just lift the knee up as high as it can go with the right position. And obviously you'll get left side and right side. Uh, 10 to 15 can be a good starting amount of reps. And then after doing the bent leg position, holding at the top is ideal. And then eventually doing straight leg work. Okay, so holding the leg out to the side. Yep, you can go to the back and down. So out to the side, lifting up, moving it to the back. And really there are infinite pathways. You could keep it up to the side and move it to the back and reverse the action.
So these exercises are focused on the gluteus medius, which is what's responsible for leg abduction when the leg is going away from the body to the side. So how strong are you? Calisthenics is the ultimate in body weight training because it's fun, challenging, and rewarding. But it's also difficult to know where to start in the whole process. So that's why we created a free calisthenics fitness assessment. And what this will do is it'll help you find out exactly where you are in your pathway of calisthenics uh, mastery. It'll help create personalized workouts for you. It'll help you achieve your goals faster. So we want everyone to have access to this regardless of their budget and location. So as long as you have internet, you'll be able to take control of your fitness program. So click below for the free assessment tool.